Hey guys, so I know I was adamant that there would be no Acropora in my tank. Well, I'm kind of flip-flopping on this. <laughs> Up to this point, most of the Acropora I see on a daily basis are just tiny sticks in the coral farm, and I just really wasn't into that whole look. The colors are cool and all, but nothing really wowed me like the big movement of LPS, so I wasn't really a huge fan of the fuzzy sticks. That changed though when I went to Orlando. I finally got to see some fully grown colonies in some show tanks, and I gotta say the aesthetic is kinda growing on me. Still, I have been warned that Acropora are really challenging and can be pretty temperamental. In this video, I wanna talk about how we are going to optimize my tank to try and make this as smooth of an experience as possible. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. So I bet y'all are wondering why I'm adding Acropora to my tank after being very adamant about doing exactly the opposite. Well, there are two big issues that Acropora actually help with. It's not every day that you hear adding Acropora is the solution to a problem, but here we are. The first issue is chemistry related. Most people would think that you shouldn't be having chemistry issues before adding Acropora or most other SPS for that matter. But in this case, Acros would actually be pretty helpful. Currently, my magnesium levels have been off the charts. No, like literally off the charts. Our magnesium tests do not go that high. My readings have been over 1500 ppm for the past two months, and this is mainly due to the salt that we use having a higher magnesium content than what my aquarium can uptake. As an aside, this is one of the problems that some hobbyists run into with reef salts that are extra high in certain elements. If your levels continue to rise over time, there often isn't a great way to lower them because doing more maintenance and water changes just leads to more and more building up. Sometimes it is better to just have a salt mix that is slightly lower than what your tank needs and use additives or reactors to get up to natural seawater levels. Anyway, since this tank is in that boat with magnesium, I want to add some fast growing stony corals to hopefully soak some of that up. Faster growing SPS corals are actually pretty good at lowering magnesium levels, so my options were either Acropora or a variety of encrusting corals like Montipora, Leptoceras, etc. Now, I don't know about you, but when it comes to a tank this big, filling it with encrusting corals I don't think would do it a whole lot of justice. Encrusting corals certainly have their place, but I have a few encrusting corals right now, and I kind of wanted something that will extend into the negative space of this tank. Which actually brings me to my next issue. My rock work in this tank has always been pretty minimal, and I love that. But when it comes to minimal rock work in a tank this size, there is going to be a lot of negative space that needs to be filled in. Not all negative space is bad, however. There can easily be a lot of artistic value to negative space within a tank, but it has to be very strategic. There were some areas of my tank that definitely benefit from negative space, but when it comes to the top of these larger rock pieces, it doesn't make sense for that space to be empty or to grow flat encrusting corals over there. Now, I could have easily added a large toadstool or some sea fans, but there's a couple of things that I don't entirely like about that idea either. The first is obviously still the magnesium issue. Soft corals don't use up as much magnesium, so I would still be left with this high magnesium level. The other issue is that a lot of our softies are still chilling comfortably over in the greenhouse right now. Why that's an issue is the drawn out quarantine process that happens between a coral's journey from the greenhouse to the new building. And it takes quite a while, so I choose not to deal with that. The corals in the new building that I'm choosing from tend to be the nicer, higher priced corals anyway, so I never had any qualms with keeping my options limited to just these corals. The only other corals inside the new building that would be able to fix my dead space issue would be Ganiopora, Duncans, Euphilia, or Acropora. I already have quite a bit of Duncans in my tank, so those are off my list. We already have a Euphilia show tank, and I don't want to be Euphilia show tank part two, so there goes that option. And I'm still trying to make Ganiopora like my tank in general, so those won't be an option for a while in the future. 
So that gets me circling back to some of the really cool Acropora dominated tanks that I've seen and wanting to try a few frags out for myself in this tank. So given the circumstances, Acropora have started to grow on me. I don't think they're the best thing since sliced bread, but they do have their charm, and it would be an excellent addition to this mixed reef system. So, how did we end up rolling out the red carpet for these new acros? Well, for starters, I wanted to try some new lights. I mentioned in my last video that I wanted lights with a larger footprint to cover any dark spots that arose from covering my tank in egg crate, as well as only having two Ecotech Radions. Which, by the way, if anyone has a more elegant solution to this egg crate, please leave that in the comments down below. We've been pondering different ways to make this look a lot cleaner, from DIYing a Euro brace along the edge to getting a custom lid for this tank. So if any of you had success with adding something like that to a rimless tank, please let me know. The original plan was just to add a third Radeon Pro on top of this tank, but then we got a visit from a Neptune Systems rep and he offered to send us a couple of demo fixtures to see if we would like it. We primarily run Ecotech lights here, but occasionally we dabble with other lights such as T5s and other LEDs like Orphix. But up till now, we've never tried the skies. These were actually pretty easy to install for two reasons. First, Ecotech and Neptune make lights with the same power supplies, so we were easily able to use the same power supply wall mount system for these new lights, which actually saved us a lot of time and hassle. The only difference was the connection point from the power supply to the lights, so we couldn't just use the old power supply from the radions on these skies. Second, the Neptune light kit also uses the same four mounting holes on top, so we can use the same Ecotech rail kit. Easy peasy. On first glance, the Neptune skies definitely made a difference in the amount of light produced on the edges of the tank. The only issue I have is the color doesn't exactly match the rest of the building, this spectrum being a bit pinker than our more greenish spectrum that we have in the rest of the tanks. But we make it work, and overall I'm very happy with the result. Along with the lights, there were a couple other changes that needed to be made to ensure the chemistry in my tank was stable enough to keep acros healthy. In my last update, you saw that we put in an alkalinity dosing pump to help with my fluctuating alkalinity levels, and that so far has really helped. I'm currently sitting at a steady 8.3 after lots and lots of making minor adjustments to the dosing schedule to really find that sweet spot. Another change I made was actually adding a GFO reactor for a couple days. One day I noticed my phosphates were getting relatively high at around 0.18 ppm and that it was probably what was causing a lot of annoying algae to grow along the sand bed and rock work. That algae could potentially cause my Acropora some stress, so we hooked this bad boy up and added some GFO and carbon to it and it actually helped out quite a bit. So hopefully we see the algae spread start to decrease. Finally, I was able to get to the point where I could start adding the acros into my tank. I figured I'd start out with some hardier acropora just to play it safe, and then if those do good, I can try adding some more prize pieces like Fox Flame, Walt Disney, etc. For starters, I have a small chunk of Kermit the Frog acropora over here on the left. This acro can grow almost anywhere and fast. It's crazy. It's like dandelions. We currently have so much of it in stock because of that, so when I asked around the office about what acros I should start putting in my tank, the general consensus was, please take some of this Kermit the Frog. <laughs> so there it is. On the same rock structure, I added in a Sato Toguchi Acropora Tort Frag. This is one of those acros that is really simple, but I kind of love it anyway. Then over here is the oh my god what the heck happened. 